concepts and definitions. Then uh, go into the center of my presentation about uh, adaptation challenges and mitigation challenges, and I will offer a way forward. The objectives of the session are to discuss the challenges in adaptation, as well to explain the challenges in dominant mitigation approaches to climate change. Uh, to contextualize what I'm going to say, I would like to describe that uh, uh, this uh, global climate change uh, I have a, uh, I have a, a distraction here. Uh, there's the global uh, uh, climate change uh, scenarios is that uh, uh, the problem is even uh, without reduction of the emissions uh, right now, still by the end of the century or by the end of the 2100 uh, year, that is about uh, 80 years or um, 79 years from now, there will still be an increase by 2.5 to 7% to, to 7 degrees centigrade. So this is a very uncomfortable situation. And in fact, the baseline is that uh, uh, 1.5 degrees centigrade uh, by 2040 should be the safer uh, level that we should uh, uh, allow to be increasing in our uh, temperature. And yet, uh, there is already two degrees centigrade, uh, a two degrees centigrade increase in temperature will is predicted to be irreversible and potentially catastrophic impacts to, in which societies as well as ecosystems will not be able to adapt. So that uh, our reference, of course, is always the pre-industrial level or the uh, before the industrial revolution that started in uh, Europe, specifically Great Britain, because that was the time when uh, the internal combustion engine was used and the start of the use of uh, burning coal as well as fossil fuel that had significantly contributed into the anthropogenic uh, causes of accumulation of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Uh, if the present day uh, concentrations of greenhouse gases were held constant, still there is an expected 0.6 degrees centigrade to be uh, emerging by 2100 uh, because of the greenhouse gases that are still uh, le uh, start uh, stating or uh, staying in the atmosphere because many can have about even a hundred years of uh, uh, length of stay in the atmosphere for all many some of these uh, greenhouse gases. In 2020, uh, one of the three warmest years on record, the average temperature was already 1.2 degrees centigrade above the pre-industrial baseline, according to the World Meteorological Organization. It means to say that uh, if it is 1.2 on average already, then 1.5 means uh, an increase of 0.3 degrees centigrade by 2040 is something only the comfortable uh, increase that is allowable. Uh, if uh, it increases uh, up it reaches, uh, 2 degrees centigrade, uh, ecologists would potentially would say that the potential catastrophic impact is inevitable. So these are realities that we have to contend with. Uh, this has a bearing also as a challenge uh, later on in my presentation. Of course, uh, to give you an overview of the climate change uh, uh, in, uh, that it brings to us, uh, typhoons or cyclones, uh, I think uh, in the mountain ecosystems, uh, especially in uh, uh, Central Europe, are, uh, there's no typhoon perhaps there in the mountainous areas, cyclones uh, to some extent, but there are of course uh, fire, a high temperature, heat waves maybe, droughts, uh, flooding, uh, Salt water intrusion only occurs in uh, coastal uh, areas, 
especially in uh, archipelago or uh, uh, yeah, beside the sea, of course. But erratic weather is uh, occurring everywhere. And this is one of the things that is problematic because we cannot predict when it happens, especially. Uh, peasant diseases, landslides, uh, landslides are prevalent uh, in mountain ecosystems. Sea water rise are in low lying areas in uh, uh, beaches or uh, uh, near oceans or seas. Forest fires are prevalent in mountain ecosystems in many places, especially in drier areas. Many of these uh, would uh, cause crop failure, and if there is crop failure repeatedly or in wide scale, food crisis might happen. But in fact, beyond that, there is more complex impact of climate change, that the climate change can affect the physical systems. I have already mentioned the crop yields, uh, biological and seasonal cycles that will affect the economy, economy, uh, infrastructure, income, and growth of uh, economy. And this affects everyone from the micro level, from the individual to family to communities and nations, uh, countries. At the individual level, uh, there are big human impacts that can happen, uh, thermal stress, injuries, uh, infectious disease, malnutrition, mental health, conflict. In fact, for example, in human health, uh, more uh, rainfalls can uh, create the incidence of more mosquitoes. Mosquitoes can uh, transmit more uh, diseases like dengue fever and uh, malaria and other things. And this can cause more health issues or problems. So it's a complex one. Now, uh, let me, before I proceed to the challenges, let me mention, uh, uh, I don't know if this has been defined already, but for clarity, uh, climate change resilience is actually the overall ability to deal with different types of hazards under changing conditions in climate change and it lowers vulnerability and increases capacity to return to pre-disaster situation in a timely, efficient, and equitable manner. Meaning, uh, if there is an uh, effect, it goes back to normal as soon as possible. The ability to go to normal is a resilient uh, attribute. So the faster and uh, uh, despite repeated the uh, stress of the ecosystems, uh, if it goes back to normal, then there is more resilience to that because we are dependent on ecosystems to provide our life support systems, our food systems that uh, provides uh, uh, livelihood as well as uh, nourishment to all of us. What is climate change? Uh, uh, besides resilience, what is uh, climate change adaptation? That is um, uh, the center of my presentation is climate change uh, adaptation challenges. So the, uh, the adaptations are actually adjustments of, in nature or human activities in response to climate change or their effects. Which moderates uh, harm or enhance the beneficial opportunities. So uh, adaptation are the, the uh, adjustments in order to uh, mitigate or, uh, no, sorry, in order to address and uh, be able to adapt to uh, effects of climate change. But uh, in uh, adaptation, let me mention that uh, plant adaptation usually is uh, uh, government programs because they are the deliberate policy decisions in response to climate change. Uh, and these are, uh, for example, the structures infrastructures being built like evacuation centers, uh, market roads, bridges, irrigation canals and dikes and things like that. But autonomous adaptation are independent actions uh, uh, by people and organizations uh, in response to climate change. So in this case, uh, this is this autonomous adaptations are more important because uh, these are the more meaningful uh, activities that can address the needs of people being directly affected by the adverse impacts of uh, climate change. 
Uh, I would like to mention also a, a more detailed, uh, another uh, dimension of uh, adaptation. Uh, we call it no regrets adaptation. And this are uh, sub element of uh, autonomous adaptation by people. And uh, it says no regrets, meaning uh, people have to do it. Usually these are part of agricultural practices, but even if the adverse effects of climate change doesn't occur, it is still beneficial because let's say uh, diversifying farming system, uh, even without uh, climate change, then still the farmers can have additional or better income or uh, general cost of no regret adaptation are relatively cheaper. Uh, mitigation uh, on the other hand, is to reduce the emission uh, and increase sequestration uh, or the sink of greenhouse gases directed towards global warming. I think I will not uh, elaborate much on this uh, uh, basic uh, definitions or concepts, uh, but to complete the uh, terminologies about climate change, the disaster risk reduction, as it says, is, these are actually uh, adapt. Uh, uh, used or practiced to minimize uh, risk and disaster. And these are usually done by mostly by governments. Some NGOs do this also, but uh, uh, they do some mapping, uh, uh, identify disaster areas, uh, monitor, monitor disaster risk and other things. Now, uh, before I proceed to the uh, challenges, I would like to mention some adaptation strategies at the farmer level. So uh, these are practical that can be done by farmers directly and immediately without much cost. Uh, so use biodiversity uh, in order to spread the risks of the damage of climate change. Uh, the farmers uh, or indigenous people, mountain people, uh, secure their own resources. They own the seeds like Dr. Ri Sing Chong has mentioned in her presentation. Uh, farmers uh, doing some uh, farmer breeding, things like that. Uh, so that is a good uh, positive adaptation of farmers, as uh, she also has mentioned as an example. Reducing exposure to economic risks, that is minimizing the cost of production so that if there is damage, there is no loss uh, on the um, uh, cost of production, only on the labor cost of the agricultural activities. Diversifying livelihood and sources of income, uh, using and conserving available natural resources. Survival uh, crops uh, in the Philippines, we have lots of natural calamities. In fact, we are number three in terms of the natural risk uh, to calamities. Uh, and uh, survival crops are important, meaning root crops or tuber crops, uh, as well as banana that can be eaten while there is no uh, food as uh, damaged by the typhoon and the government um, uh, support has not arrived yet. The people has to fill their stomach and they need uh, some survival crop available to them. So root crops as survival crops are important. Usually they're non-traditional crops, uh, but they pro provide important adaptation strategy. Uh, not so many people uh, mentioned that uh, organizations or social solution is also important. Uh, banking and the local knowledge or indigenous knowledge. Now, the focus of my presentation is the are the challenges uh, to adaptation. The first one that I have identified is that uh, the manifestations and impacts of climate change are complex and stochastic. Stochastic means unpredictable or they are they come in chance chances. So we cannot uh, tell when it comes, and therefore. Any adaptation is difficult to uh, set up, to set or put in place because we are not uh, sure when it comes. Uh, if there are some uh, climate patterns, even climate patterns are changing now. So that's why it's uh, called the climate change or seasonal pattern, I should say. Uh, for example, the adaptation to drought or forest fires uh, is different from storms or flooding. Uh, and the uh, adaptation or solutions are different. And therefore, uh, communities would be uh, challenged on what kind of adaptation uh, they should put in place. Number two uh, challenge is that adaptation requires investment, which is not uh, 
which is not available among rural people. So uh, that's the challenge. Uh, to do adaptation, you do some uh, investment, you do some diversification, you want to acquire some livestock as uh, an adaptation uh, strategy. But uh, if you want livestock, you want you have to buy them. And if you, uh, the people there in the rural people areas don't have much money to buy all of these in, uh, inputs into the farm. So that uh, this is a challenge, uh, really, uh, the lack of capital of people uh, to purchase additional components of their farm as adaptation to climate change. Number three, uh, there are poor rural people are busy producing food on daily basis or short term basis, and they have not much time uh, to plan and implement long term adaptation strategies. So that's the problem. They're busy and they're worrying for the next food, for the food for the following day and for the week. And the adaptation to uh, climate change are uh, requiring more planning, more resources. And in that case, uh, people don't uh, put much attention uh, if uh, these are requiring much um, uh, resources and much time to do this because they have to survive on the daily basis, as I said. So these are challenges. Number four, the government uh, programs uh, being planned adaptation, as I said, these infrastructures are of less direct impacts on farmers' adaptation because uh, farmers' adaptation immediately, as I said, they need to eat today, tomorrow. And uh, a uh, dike, or um, a uh, evacuation site will not feed them. And so these are uh, problems that makes some farmers indifferent sometimes if they don't understand the uh, broader uh, adaptation uh, concept and framework of such uh, activities. Number five, challenge to adaptation, science and technology in food systems and food production is predominantly for productivity and need to enhance adaptive and resilient dimensions. So most of the agronomic developments are designed to produce higher yield. Uh, but what we need more to inc incorporate as parameters or uh, criteria for developing new varieties, new kinds of uh, uh, crops are their adaptive uh, adaptiveness, adaptiveness and resilience to the challenges of climate change. Number six, challenge to adaptation. Science and adaptations uh, need to be translated into uh, policy. And policy is usually at the government, mostly national level or uh, provincial level. And in turn, the policy has to be turned into programs of action. Or sometimes uh, the policy is turned into a program and the program has turned into action. So this kind of thing takes uh, several steps and it takes a longer time to reach the people, to the uh, farmers or indigenous people, especially in the mountains. So these are challenges that we need to consider and we need to develop approaches in order to uh, address these challenges so that we can have higher chances of success in implementing adaptation by mountain people. The last uh, challenge uh, to adaptation that I have uh, listed here, although there are many more uh, that can be done uh, as I can be identified as adaptation, but the most challenge to adaptation is that adaptation is possible only up to a certain level of global warming. That is 1.5 degrees centigrade increase by from the pre-industrial level or maximum maybe of two level, uh, two degrees centigrade because a critical or tipping point temperature, that is the time when ecosystem structures and ecosystem services can no longer bounce back or they don't have any more resilience. Climate change, there will be no already problem. And therefore, if that tipping point of the global warming occurs, no amount of adaptation is effective. So in this case, we really need to push for an active, effective uh, 
mitigation of climate change. The problem is uh, there are also mitigation challenges. So the mitigation uh, uh, aspect, uh, I give you some, I will share to you some mitigation um, uh, aspects uh, or strategies. Uh, but of course, there are so many mitigation strategies also. But at the farm level and effective at the farm level, conservation of forest and uh, trees uh, is uh, an effective mitigation. As I said a while ago in the uh, earlier slides, mitigation is how to reduce, how to do activities to reduce the e e emission or uh, available greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that is causing climate change and global warming more specifically. So conserving forests to minimize deforestation uh, because deforestation on the average contributes about 15 to 18% of greenhouse gases, uh, GHG means greenhouse gases. Uh, organic farming uh, practice has been uh, uh, documented to be an effective mitigating strategy because you capture more carbon uh, into the soil and there is longer residence time of the carbon into the soil. So instead of that uh, carbon compounds, carbon dioxide and its other compounds are in, instead of being in the air, if it is in the soil, then it can it, uh, minimize uh, the emission of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and therefore a mitigation to climate change can fix organic farming can fix two to four tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per hectare per year so that's the potential of organic farming stopping using uh, nitrogen chemical fertilizers because uh, nitrogen chemical fertilizers uh, can produce nitrous oxide and 2O and uh, nitrous oxide is about uh, 200 uh, 300 times uh, global potential to uh, carbon dioxide. It means that one molecule of nitrous oxide is equivalent to 300 carbon dioxide in terms of its uh, greenhouse gas equivalents. So that uh, nitrogen chemical fertilizer should be minimized if you wanted to minimize uh, the emission of uh, greenhouse gases in the form of nitrous oxide. Local markets for shorter food mileage, uh, Dr. Um, Yi Ching Song also mentioned about uh, local markets as an adaptation to climate change. Now, um, the major challenges that uh, the market-based mitigation uh, uh, are not effective because they are uh, allowing continued use of fossil fuel rather than switching to renewable energy so that the better mitigation should be really putting more emphasis on the alternative to fossil fuel and energy so becoming from renewable uh, maybe solar panels uh, wind uh, turbines and things like that uh, the dominant uh, mitigation perspective is the green economy uh, developed i think in the rio summit but these are uh, business oriented Biofuels, climate smart agriculture or GMOs, uh, reduction of emission due to deforestation and carbon trading, uh, the uh, geoengineering that is uh, fertilizing the oceans to go by with iron or nitrogen, the limiting substances to grow algae, uh, that this algae can uh, capture more uh, carbon dioxide from the air because they photosynthesize. Uh, and phytoplanktons and so uh, things. But there are problems because it can uh, create uh, the blooming of non-beneficial microorganisms and it can also uh, be detrimental to the ecosystems and the seas or oceans. Deep sea carbon dioxide injection and crop insurance. Specifically in biofuels, uh, to produce ethanol as a biofuel uh, that is uh, uh, produced from uh, corn or maize, uh, I mean maize or from sugarcane, uh, producing ethanol from uh, plants, maize or sugarcane requires about 30% uh, more fossil energy because in planting maize or sugarcane, you also have to cultivate the land using fossil fuel. Uh, you irrigate the land, you harvest the land with machines, 
you process it with machines, uh, you make the ethanol with machines, you distribute with machines. So uh, there is more energy uh, used in that uh, uh, production of biofuels. So there is a problem there. And biofuels can increase uh, soil erosion by about 33%, even up to 200% depending on the region and the slope and the type of the soil. And the biofuels displaces food production and local people. I will elaborate more on that. Climate change uh, and smart agriculture or GMOs, genetically modified organisms. Although this is also an adaptation, um, GMOs, that it promotes uniformity and monoculture and susceptibility to pests in the long run and it is dependent on chemical inputs. Therefore, it is not dependent and sustainable, and it is not ecologically sound. The clean Dr. development mechanism. Uh, Dr. Medina, Medina, yeah, you have three more minutes. Uh, yeah, okay, please. thank you. Uh, the clean development mechanism, though, the reduction of emission due to deforestation and plus means uh, it can be planting of new trees. Uh, the tree plantations for uh, an agrofuels the as a, the challenges is that it displaces indigenous people uh, in the place where uh, this uh, tree plantations are being planted. It competes with food production in terms of the the area being planted to food rather than uh, into plantations rather than food. And monoculture plantation usually is uh, used. Carbon trading is a license to pollute. Uh, and if this is a problem. Uh, the carbon trading to organic uh, farmers, uh, something is they're only paid something like in Africa, they're suddenly uh, paid only about $2 per hectare per year. And the consultant to assess how much uh, carbon is being uh, assessed can be uh, multiples of that amount, or maybe 50, 100, uh, things like that, much higher than the farmer. So it's not a. Uh, uh, Beneficial thing, in fact, carbon trading is a license to pollute. It doesn't reduce the emission globally. So the market-based uh, mitigation approaches perpetuate climate injustice. Uh, market-based mechanisms are ineffective solutions and are exacerbating the problem. Those who contribute the least emissions per capita suffer most of the impact of climate change. The small island states, women, youth, coastal people, local communities, indigenous people, mountain people, peaceful folks, uh, and the elderly are, uh, and the poor are disproportionately affected. Genuine mitigation is important. And the, how to call the planet, we need uh, as an alternative to this, uh, as I said, we need low carbon society, agroecology, organic diversified, we need farmers uh, control of the agriculture. We need to shift from industrial food chains to local food webs and systems. We need also to look at this in terms of climate justice, uh, using the concept of common but differentiated responsibilities that all countries have an obligation to address climate change, but the each uh, country should be guided by the extent of such effort and thus uh, simultaneously addressing inequalities that the historical polluters must uh, have a bigger uh, mitigation uh, roles than those who are uh, uh, small scale polluters. Beyond climate change, the needs of the most vulnerable sector and communities must be addressed. The way forward is stop chemical farming, uh, especially urea, uh, nitrogen, uh, to avoid uh, emission of nitrous oxide, which is very uh, uh, greenhouse gas uh, effective. Support local initiatives for resilience to climate change with, with and by farmers. We demand climate justice and demand climate emergency, meaning we cannot wait. We must act now for. This is an issue of human survival, uh, not uh, survival of anyone, but for, for the human species, for everyone. 
So in 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 uh, conclusion or finally, I would like to mention. Uh, I think this was uh, mentioned by uh, one great scientist. Uh, he said you cannot solve the problem with the same kind of thinking that created the problem. And business as usual is no longer an option. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Charitro Medina uh, for your nice presentation on climate change and adaptation challenges. Uh, our uh, 